So I'm getting questions from some of you guys. Some of you guys are new to trading and you want to know what it is that you need to learn to become a successful trader. Many of you guys are asking like, hey, what's the one thing I need to do to be a successful trader? A lot of you guys think it's just one thing you need to learn and magically you'll be a profitable trader. And it's not like that at all. It's actually a lot of things that you have to learn. It's not one area that you have to improve in that's going to make all the difference. It's all these little areas of improvement that together make you a profitable trader. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about a theory called the theory of the aggregation of marginal gains. So let's talk about the aggregation of marginal gains. And you can see I subtitled this, every little bit helps. So basically what the aggregation of marginal gains is, is it states that if you can improve in many areas of your discipline, for example, in trading, if you can improve in many areas of your discipline by as little as 1% in each area, you will see a dramatic improvement in your overall performance. So if we're talking about trading, you know, are, are you doing the proper position sizing? Are you paying attention to liquidity? Are you paying attention to volatility? Are you on the right side of theta? You know, if you have all of these areas of trading, if you can improve by just 1% in each area, 1% in a single area is not going to help you much, right? If you just improve your trading by 1% because you, for example, are taking better risk versus reward or whatever it happens to be, 1% is not going to help you much. But if you improve in about 15 different areas by 1%, together you're going to see a drastic improvement in your trading results. So when I get questions about, hey, DT, what do I need to do to improve my trading? You know, I, I'm, I'm going to actually answer that question. I'm going to give you a list of some things to start working on now because you can see in the very first bullet point where I define the aggregation of marginal gains. And then I say some examples. Well, some examples are going to include, number one, only trade liquid underlying products, right? Only trade liquid products. Do not trade illiquid products. If you trade illiquid products, you are going to lose money due to slippage. And I think this point about trading only liquid products is so important that I put it first in the list is because this truly kills your trading account. Like you will slowly bleed money. Eventually you will go broke if you're trading illiquid products because of that huge bid ass spread. You're just giving up too much money on each and every trade. So please pay attention to liquidity. So now that you've improved in that area, in the liquidity area, maybe you've improved your trading just a small little fraction, you know, of a percent or something. But again, we're going to improve in a lot of different areas. And if you can improve in a lot of different areas, the aggregation of all those marginal gains actually will improve your trading in a big way. It becomes actually a very big gain when you put them all together. So some other areas that you can improve in is make efficient use of your capital. So what does that mean? Make efficient use of your capital. Well, that means don't tie up too much of your buying power for too long of a time for too little reward. And this is a trap that new options traders fall into on a regular basis is they take trades that take up way too much of their buying power and then the trade goes against them so it's a loser and then they don't want to accept the loss right they don't want to realize the loss so they stay in the trade they they keep rolling they hold on they might be in the trade for six weeks six months maybe even a year and have all of that buying power tied up that whole time and eventually you know the trade finally works in their favor to where they either get out for a scratch or a very small profit and why did you do that now, was that efficient use of all of that buying power being in that trade for that small little gain that you made for the, those few bucks, right? Those few shekels you made on that trade. Was that worth it? No. And this is one of the things that kills a lot of traders is they just don't make efficient use of their capital. The next area you could improve on is make sure the risk is worth the reward. So what is the buying power requirement? We'll consider that your risk because that's a good representation of your max loss. So take a look at the buying power requirement and then take a look at your maximum possible reward. Does that reward 
fit with the risk you're taking. If it seems okay, take the trade. If it doesn't seem okay, don't take the trade. Next, be sure to pay attention to probabilities. You should know your pop, your probability of profit on each and every trade you make. You should know what the probabilities are. You should know the pop. And if you're one of those people that take off your trade at 50% of max profit, also know your P50 number, the probability of making 50% on the trade. Again, if you know the percentages, you know the probabilities on your trades, you're not so blindsided when trades go against you because, for example, if I sell a 20 delta put and I know it has a pop of 80%, you know, I know I'm probably going to face some tough times on that 20 delta put about 20% of the time. So when those 20% of losing trades happen, you know, I'm not blindsided by it. I knew that there was a one in five chance that that put was going to test me in a big way. The next area you can improve in is always manage your trades early. Managing your trades early means manage them prior to expiration. So do not let your options trades go to expiration. It should be a very rare thing that you let any long option or short option go to expiration. And this is very important because there's been countless studies on this, especially by the Tasty Live guys, that managing your trades prior to expiration actually increases your P&L, your profit and loss. You make more money if you get out of your trades early. If you let your trades always go to expiration, and some options traders do this, they always let all of their options trades go to expiration, and they don't realize they're actually losing money doing that. You actually make more money. You actually increase your P&L by getting out of the trade early. So again, that's another area of a marginal gain, but again, if you add all these marginal gains up, we're gonna make a big difference in our trading. The next area you could improve on is making sure that theta is always working for you. Remember, theta is the money we make on the passage of time. So remember, the passage of time always benefits short options and always punishes long options. So when you're short an option, theta is working for you. You get paid a little money each and every day that passes. And if you're long options, then you're on the opposite side of theta. It means that theta is actually punishing your option each and every day that passes. And simply knowing that theta exists and how theta helps short options and hurts long options, should you be selling more options than buying options? Obviously, the answer to that question is a yes. Another Greek you wanna monitor is Vega. Make sure that Vega is always working for you. Pay attention to implied volatility because that's what Vega is. It's the money we make based on changes in implied volatility. Remember, with short options, we want IV to drop over the life of our trade. With long options, you want IV to rise over the life of your trade. So when you sell options, and I'm assuming most of you guys are primarily option sellers, when you're an option seller, it is best to sell your options when IVR, IV rank, is high. When you sell options when IVR is high, you receive richer premiums. You receive a bigger credit, and because you receive a bigger credit, your P&L will actually increase. Your P&L will be better if you make it a point to always sell options when IVR is high. Now, selling options when IVR is high doesn't necessarily improve your odds of winning on the trade. It has nothing to do with probabilities. The probabilities are the probabilities that they're set, right? All we do with Vega is we just want to make sure that we benefit from a potential volatility collapse. So always sell options when IVR is high and most of the time you'll get a reversal. You'll, you'll get IVR come down a little bit and again, that helps your short options. So again, just another area where we make a marginal gain. Another area to look at is always make sure you trade small to avoid getting crippled by a big loser. This is really what puts people out of the game. They trade way too big. They take way too big of a position size, individual position sizes, or they put way too much of their overall net lick account value at risk. I see people that are trading and using 60%, 70%, 80% or more of their total buying power for their account, right? If you have that much of your account in the market right now, you're putting way too much of your account at risk. As a hard rule, I would say never trade more than 50% of your total net lick value. Never put more than 50% of your account at risk 
ever. And in most of the time, you probably want to stick to around 30 to 40 percent of your total buying power in use. And I would say with your individual position sizes, uh, for most normal sized accounts, I would say try to not put more than, say, two to three percent of your net lick account value at risk in any individual position. So stick to some rule, you know, whatever percentages that seem right to you, you know, set some rules and stick by them. The main thing is that you actually have rules and that you stay mechanical and that you always stick to the plan. So we talked about trading small. Let's also talk about trading often because that's another area that can improve your trading performance is you need to make sure that you trade often so that you have enough occurrences for the probabilities to work out as expected. So I've done a video called the law of large numbers. Go watch that video. You need to understand the law of large numbers. And once you understand that concept, the law of large numbers, you will understand why you need to trade often. You need to find a, a strategy that you think you have some kind of edge at, and then you need to exploit it by trading it as much as you can. You need to make hundreds, if not thousands of those trades you know as as often as you can so trade small and also trade often and the last bullet point is constantly learn you should always be constantly learning some ways you could be learning is watch video content watch video content from quality sources for example tasty live you guys know the tasty live content network those are the guys behind the tasty trade trading platform they have a content network called tasty live they've been doing videos for about 15 years. They broadcast for like 12 hours every day. So there's literally like tens of thousands of hours of video content on options trading that you could go watch on the Tasty Live Network. Also read books because this trading thing is so complicated. It's so deep. You're never going to learn everything you need to know about the world of trading stocks or futures. Futures is a different world. Options is a different world. Forex is a different world. You might want to read books on how macroeconomic events, you know, affect the markets. You may want to learn about efficient market theory. You may want to learn about a lot of important concepts that you've never heard about, but you will find those in books. So go read some books. Read some of the books that I've recommended on videos in the past. I did a video not too long ago. I think it was the top five books that I think every trader should have in their library. Go check that video out. And if there's some books in that video that you don't currently own, please purchase those books and also learn from other more experienced traders. If you hang out in any kind of trading community online, there's always some traders that have been trading for many, many years. They've been around for a long time. And if they've been in the game a long time, trust me, they know what they're doing. It's not an accident, right? You, you can't be in the game as long as some of these people have been in the game and be a bad trader, because if you're a bad trader, you're going to get put out of the game early. So when you see people that have been trading for a number of years and seem to be successful at it, learn from those people. Ask questions. Most of these experienced traders are friendly guys that do want to help others learn. They will be glad to share some of their knowledge with you if you ask them in a respectful way. So there you have it. I just listed, I don't know, about 10 or 12 areas of trading that chances are if you're new to trading, you really could improve in some of those areas, maybe all of those areas. And again, if you improve in any of those areas by as little as 1%, does it make much of a difference? No, but if you improve in all of those areas by as little as 1%, then together, again, it's the aggregation of marginal gains. Now, if you wanna learn more about options trading, including my favorite option strategy, which is the wheel strategy, check out my book, The Super Wheel Option Strategy. This book, in it, I actually do cover each and every one of those bullet points that I hit in the slideshow today. Those are all topics that I focus on in that book. So check out that book, The Super Wheel Option Strategy, available on Amazon. You'll find a link in the description below. Peace, guys.